Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, I got tagged in on this this morning. A couple people sent it to me, and I, I apologize, I forget uh, who did. We were out and about this morning, but apparently, HBO was busted for using quote unquote secret fake accounts to troll TV critics. Shocker. Shocker. So if HBO is doing it, who else is doing it? Who else is using an old account to obsessively troll uh, Twitter users and to troll YouTubers? I can pretty much, I mean, I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, my money's on Disney. Oh, absolutely. I think I Disney have... owned 100%. I, I know because like back when I, I told you this before, when I used to watch the numbers on these accounts on Twitter, a lot of these Disney things would show up and they would be connected to all these other accounts that had like these 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 repost accounts that would go on there and show for these companies and they all had this, they had the, they were all paying for these bots. Yeah. And I was like, I, that was years ago. And I was like, oh, they're, they're clearly faking their numbers and faking the interaction and faking the positivity. And I, that was years ago I pointed it out to you. So you have to wonder, like, how far down the rabbit hole does this go? Because, you know. There's a lot um, of money at stake. It goes there's a far. lot of money. There's, and just, you know, people are ass mad. They're ass mad that their, their shows are being attacked by critics. Um, and you know, back in the day, you really couldn't respond to your critics. You just kind of took the, the beating and that was it. But now everybody's a critic. I mean, there's so many people on Twitter and there are some accounts that make their personality just attacking mm -hmm. other, you know, entertainment or whatever. And, and, uh, YouTubers like us that cover entertainment and cover all the drama. Uh, we know that there are people that don't like us very much. That's so, okay. Love ya. <laughs> we love you, hater, psycho stalker. But it, it does make you wonder because there are some accounts that are so ass mad. It's like, this is beyond being just a stan. This is beyond like, I'm defending Disney Star Wars because I'm a fan and I don't like you people. It's like, this has been going on for five or six years now where there are people that are as angry at YouTubers and Twitter users as they were back when The Last Jedi came out. And it mm -hmm. still goes on and on and on. And they literally make that their personality. So are there people being hired by the studio or are there people associated, even more diabolical, associated with the production in some way that are going to go out of their way to try to destroy any criticism? They're going to go out of their way to do it anyway because there's a lot of money involved and the yeah. reputation's involved. And so it's worth it to them to spend all this money to try to destroy criticism that, you know, if it benefits them in the long run. It's, it's definitely worth their time. And Gina Carano brought it up. She Apparently, there are supposed to be a bunch of emails or something they're going to get released. I hope so. That would be would, amazing. God, I'd love that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know exactly the depth of it, but she has made uh, comments recently because of the South Park episode that Kathleen Kennedy and her troll army, they, they were going to all kinds of links to recruit people to attack her and attack uh, YouTubers that were critical of Star Wars. And um, well, a lot of times it was like, they were like all the fire, it was like a very bot-like. Yeah. You yeah. know, it and was that, very bot-like a lot. Of time. Not always, but there was a lot of bot-like type things. We've it, seen it for other things too. Other movies and shows, she mm. Before AI, you could do it. You could, uh, you could actually fire up uh, Twitter bots. Now I think Elon Musk has kind of put the kibosh on that, but you've got people out there that either think, they're going to get a cookie if they stand for these studios or they're associated with the production or they're actually being paid. You know, yeah. it's cheaper to kick somebody a couple thousand dollars a month to just keep, you know, dogpiling on YouTubers. And then they, then it gets more diabolical because they talk to their friends in the media. Then you got hit piece articles being written mm -hmm. or they go out and start posting on message boards or something. We're telling so, you, there are the, for sure discords where they're coordinating this shit. Absolutely. I, we have seen images of the discords where they coordinate this shit. Yes. Uh, so let's talk about all this because it's been confirmed that HBO is doing it and how many others are there. And I think it's well, you know, I think damn well Disney's doing it. Disney you know, for sure. You know, the, the whole She-Ra thing was they were too. Because oh, yeah. if, if, if they were doing whole big articles and all the spreads about Noel Stevens, I'm sorry, Andy Stevenson, it was Noel at the time, Andy Stevenson, then you know damn well they were spending that kind of money and effort to go to, out to the She-Ra stuff too. Yeah. And our, our reaction to the trailer for season two was the only one that got flagged. Yeah, all the other people didn't. They were, they were loving it. We were like, what the hell we is We laughed this? at it. And then ours and, got yeah. flagged. Uh-huh, convenient. So anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about this. But before we do, uh, go out to shopclownfish.com, Shadowbinders Volume 3, up for pre-order. This is our replacement for Indiegogo. We're no mm -hmm. longer doing Indiegogo. We're kind of pissed off at Indiegogo. Yep. Uh, we might do Kickstarter at a later date. But for now, go out to shopclownfish.com. 
www.bookthreeaudiobook.com. You can secure a copy of book three. Uh, we also have a handful of book one and two left. And this is the first new Shadowbinders content in, my God, uh, 10 years? 10 years. 10 I think years. there's a little more than a handful, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So there there you go, guys. Uh, link in the description, link in the comments. Uh, let's look at this. This is coming from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone. Oh, Rolling Stone, who also I want to point out, seems to have way more followers on Twitter than they actually have actual interaction to, to be legitimate. But continue. Yeah, so this is uh, going back to 2020. And there was a lot of idiocy in 2020 because everybody's locked in their houses and everything. But they said that, yeah, these text conversations came up as part of a lawsuit that they were basically telling each other to go out and create alt accounts and shut up critics. Uh, HBO's then president of original programming, Casey Boys, needed somebody on, I think it's Boys or Blows, probably Boys, uh, needed <laughs> someone to go on a mission. Either one, probably not a good thing. Okay. He was named HBO CEO and chairman in October of 2022. He was irked by a tweet from a Vulture TV critic who had some thoughts about Perry Mason, HBO series star starring uh, Matthew Reese as a private detective. So I didn't even know they rebooted that. Anyway. Of course they did, because there's no original ideas left. Yeah. Um, and this person uh, said, uh, Dear Prestige TV, please find some way to communicate male trauma besides showing me a flashback to the hero's memories of trench warfare. Uh, so the guy was annoyed. This, the HBO boss was annoyed. According to text messages reviewed by Rolling Stone, and uh, he sent the tweet to Kathleen McCaffrey, HBO's senior vice president of drama programming. Maybe a Twitter user should tweet that it's a pretty blithe response to what soldiers legitimately went through on the battlefield. He texted, do you have a secret handle? Couldn't we say, especially given that it's D-Day, to dismiss a soldier's experience like that seems pretty disrespectful. This must be answered. So they're telling them specifically, go out and discredit this critic mm -hmm. and, and use uh, uh, D-Day as a reason. This is the same thing we see all the time. Like, you're just dismissing people's problems. You're just uh, you're just angry about black people. You're angry about gay yeah. people. And it's always like, yeah. You must be a Nazi. Dismissed. Yeah. You know? It's like, meanwhile, that account's like uh, posting all kinds of uh, anti-Israel stuff. But you must be a Nazi. Um, <laughs> yeah, Blows was serious. Or Blows was uh, serious. Who can go on a mission? According to the messages, uh, he had they need to find a mole at arm's length from the HBO executive team. We just need a random to make the point and make her feel bad. Uh, you mean like you're just a racist, you're an internalized misogynist, you're a homophobe because you don't like our movie, TV show, our changes, etc. This is coming out in court that HBO executives who are pissed off that they got a bad review are going to these links to try to discredit a critic. So it makes what Gina Carano said seem a whole lot more, you know, possible and plausible. And I can guarantee you Disney was doing the same things. Oh, absolutely. Because I, I mean, I've wondered sometimes, I've seen accounts out there. I'm like, these people, and there's usually a handful of them, they have no skin in the game, but they have spent years just going around sh trying to shut up every critic. They can shut up. And I'm like, what's in it for them? Like, well, it doesn't make any well, sense. Well, time, they said to be extra, extra positive and, and shut people up because then Disney would give you media access. Yeah. They never did that, but that's what they they tried to argue to talk these little these little bloggers to do that. Yeah. They, arm, got, they got their cupcake parties. Find a mole, arm's length from the executive team. Well, they so, said they did because they said, according to the messages, as some, they got someone to say, a somewhat elitist take, is there anything more traumatic for men and not women than fighting in the war? Sorry if it seems too convenient for you. Yeah, and then th then what happens is some other journal will pick it up and be like, critic roasted on D-Day by, you know, insensitive critic roasted on D-Day. Maybe she's a Nazi. So let's call their, their friends in the media, yeah. That, and then Here's that, a little bit of money. We don't know about the money, but uh, my money's on money. But my money's on money. But that's how they would play Twitter. They basically would target somebody and then they'd get their friends to all, I call it the chum bucket. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you get like one tweet or one retweet that gets traction. And then here comes the chum bucket. And there are some randos, like legit randos on Twitter that for some reason, and they're nobody special, but for some reason, a lot of their tweets, their hot takes get picked up by the same media outlets. Right, because they're in this, they're a fake account for somebody that's probably a journo and they're probably yes. all in the same discord. The polygons, the or Kotaku, the, or, you know, Slack. the, you know, the comic book sites or and whatever. Then, well, you look at too, a lot of these sites are owned by the same people. So it, to try to magnify it, to make it get what their po point is out there to make it sound like there's more of them that agree. They'll like get together and like three authors in the Slack will decide we're going to write the same article across all three yes, of the publications that, that are owned by the same 
same company. That's 100% true. And they're like, oh, look how people are totally offended by this because all these outlets wrote about it. But they're all owned by the same damn company. Or they're all in the same Discord together, hanging out in the friends. All it takes is one person with a big enough megaphone to make it feel like everybody's against you, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and uh, again, when you're talking, you know, massive amounts of money at stake with these TV shows and these movies and even comic books, there were a couple accounts on Twitter. Their entire personality was attacking anyone who attacked Marvel comics. Yeah. Guess what? Guess who they were being paid by. Uh, Yeah. Right. Like, and this person doesn't work for Marvel comics to the best of my knowledge. It's never worked. I bet they do. (laughs) Well, had had not. And, and uh, then you find out that like either they're a wannabe or they've got other connections or whatever. But um, yeah. So they said that the exchange was, one of uh, at least six instances between June 2020 and April 2020, uh, one in which Bloys and McCaffrey discussed using what they called a secret army to fire back at several TV critics on Twitter, as well as anonymous commenters on articles about HBO programming, according to text exchanges reviewed by Rolling Stone. Again, Rolling Stone is like those who live in glass houses type situation, but okay. Yeah. Um, Rolling Stone reviewed the metadata associated, associated with the messages. They're authentic. Uh, they verified their authenticity. So yeah, they said that, no, these are real. HBO did not dispute the legitimacy of the messages when approached for comment by Rolling Stone. In a statement, HBO said it would not comment on select exchanges between programmers and errant tweets. Uh, the messages are part of a trove of material being prepared for a previously unreported wrongful termination lawsuit um, by former HBO staffer Sully Tamori against HBO. So basically, there are some people, just ba- they're, they're people that, are, that are just like collecting all this information and saving copies of it to, to use against you if you do something to make them mad. Yeah. So, like, what? I mean, this is an attempt. This is crazy. Um, and was laid off in October and harassed and faced retaliation, discrimination, after disclosing a mental health diagnosis to his bosses. He also allegedly asked to re- perform menial tasks not related to his work duties, such as creating fake online. He was asked to fake online accounts to respond to critics. Oh, that is really interesting. So, how many interns? are being used, abused, and kicked to the curb. Because I've noticed since a lot of these companies have been laying people off, there is not as much constant outrage being thrown at dissenters. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it's just these people are panicked because they're like, oh, we got to go get, we got to go get a real job now, or we got to get another job, or I don't have any loyalty to that company anymore because they laid me off. Or is it just a case of, they don't have all those, those uh, underlings working for them. They could spend all day on Twitter you know, whacking the beehive and trying to discredit critics. This is crazy. Uh, this is another one. Uh, Casey's looking for a tweeter. He's mad at Alan uh, Seppenwall. Can our secret operative please tweet at Alan's review? Alan is always predictably safe and scared in his opinions. And then we just have to delete this chain, right? Oh my God, I got scared. I got scared. So they're basically like, hey, can, what can we do to destroy these people we don't like? Mm-hmm. And you, I guarantee you if HBO is doing it, they were all doing it. And this is not a shocker to me in any way, shape, or form. We already been saying that we thought they were doing this shit. It's just that now I have evidence, apparently. Yeah, they said first and foremost, this is uh, this is about HBO's culture uh, of how it fosters a dynamic of ongoing harassment and discrimination in the workplace. Well, that's that's his lawyer speaking, but it also shines a light on the fact that this is something that they do in Hollywood. And again, if HBO is doing it, everybody else is doing it. Yeah, they're saying Blois was obsessed with Twitter and always wanted to pick a fight on Twitter. He always texts me, ask me if I'm friends to reply if there's a way to create a dummy account that can't be traced to, to do his bidding. Oh my God. I'm not surprised. I don't like your subscribe. This doesn't surprise me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Martinez says, uh, Tamori created a fake Twitter account to comply with his boss's request. Like, like many young employees starting out in their career, it was very important to Sully to not only perform at a high level, but to seek opportunities where he could showcase his acumen and build credibility for the possibility of creating long-term success at HBO. So he was really good at, he was going out and finding all every opportunity he could to like, you know, slam on people to make this guy happy. Yeah. So that's what they're doing. So, but, Look, again, this goes back to Gina Carano saying this is what Kathleen Kennedy was doing. She she wasn't getting her hands dirty, but I guarantee you she had young employees at, at Lucasfilm that well, were more than happy to go create I know, sock puppets. At least like involved in the cartoons and stuff that there are people that were being promised, you know, a cookie if they went and, and you know, got, you know, went, and went after detractors. I'm just saying. And were we some of those detractors? Yes. Yes, we were because I saw screenshots. But yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And then it, it really starts to click into place more because you're like, what is this person really that obsessed 
with YouTubers are really that obsessed yes, with- Yes, they are. They're very obsessed with YouTubers and critics and Twitter stands. But then stuff. it's like, what is it? If they were just some normie, some person that had no connection whatsoever to these studios or productions or whatever, it'd be like, they'd say their piece or whatever and they would move on. But there are oh. people that they, for years, years- this is why Rolling Stones live in a glass house and, and throwing stones, okay? okay? So the Nevers premiered and became a sore spot for boys. The critics largely plan, planned the Joss Whedon steampunk fantasy series. This time, the target of his ire was Rolling Stones chief TV critic Alan Sepinwall okay, that's for his two yeah. and a half star review. This is why the glass houses people are throwing stones. Right, right. Casey's looking for a tweeter. He's mad at Alan Sepinwall. McCaffrey texted to Maury, referring to boys. Can our secret operative please tweet Alan's review? Alan is always that's when he said the predictable is safe. I just got scared, LOL. And it was because they went after one of Rolling Stones people, which is why Rolling Stones is even putting this out there. So, yeah. So, yeah. So this is revenge, basically. But but still, like, that day, a newly created account under the name Kelly Shepard, a self-described Texas mom and herbalist, replied to Seppin Wall's tweet, Baz Review, repeating the sentiment McCaffrey expressed. I think if somebody is going to drag you a on- newly created account, yes. Newly created account. I think but there are accounts that have been around for years. But you look back and it's like they have- they have a purpose. Like, yeah, they, they never only... tweet anything on their own. They just tweet in regards to something else. Yeah, it's like they're completely obsessed with this one thing or, or, or this retweet. one account or whatever it is. It's called a sock puppet. It's called a sock puppet. So these are studio people. So some of the people you're interacting with that just spend all damn day on Twitter might actually be associated with productions that you might have actually said something negative about at some point in time. And, uh, you know, they're just not real happy with you. Yeah. And again, it's another bunch of numbers. Yeah. And it's like, it's a picture from like, that's an international business website photo. Yeah. Kelly Shepard. She, her pronouns in the bio. We believe that. The, okay. that the, Okay. She's a she, her from Texas. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I believe in that. Uh, I'm sure. Austin, maybe. Austin. But um, yeah, the Kelly Shepard account tweeted, uh, how shocking the two middle-aged white men you inhale are shitting on a show about women. Yeah, so this this is what they do. They basically go in, they create the account, they go in and they try to whack the beehive, and then they're they're gonna call up their friends in the media and be like, Oh my well, god, they I, I made them mad and they're freaking out. Could you do a hit piece on well, them? No, look at this. Look at this though. I'm gonna discredit you. Two middle aged white men. So you're you're racist and, yep. and misogynist. Look, we have to bring a shield in, but it, ironically, it was a dude pretending to be a woman. Yep put this out there and yep. immediately they're there. Put the shields up. Use ever use the minorities as a shield again from criticism. God, this is crazy. Who's just shittier person here? Just asking. Yep. And now they're harassing, they're harassing this, uh, Rolling Stone guy. So yeah, it affects Rolling Stone. So Rolling Stone has no problem, um, shitting on YouTubers or whatever, uh, you know, shitting on the alt right Nazis. But, but these are the same tactics that they use on people like us. They're, well, now they're using on like, Rolling Stone. He, this sounds like Kathleen Kennedy, according to like, we get, he's like, he's getting, he's getting fixated on anonymous comment, commentators yeah. on deadline articles. Yes. So they were like, even on articles and then they were going and they were getting fixated on these anonymous users. Yeah. Uh, CEO was, yeah, upset with an anonymous user on deadline article. We see that. We see anonymous in the articles all the time. We were covering the strikes. Um, you know, how dare someone write, write that, uh, let's see, the good, sh wasn't a good show and harshly. This is about, uh, what, Fleabag? It wasn't a good show and harshly unveils Bloy's era cynicism of HBO development. Try making a show that can actually inspire people. Great TV doesn't have to be ugly. How dare someone write that? He texted McCaffrey, according to the message. I want to say something along the lines of, LOL, okay, they're just counting their Emmys or something like that. Later, he suggested, maybe we can say uh, we must have passed on their development and they're bitter. And then here comes the anonymous shit. Hi, HBO's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it it this is this 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 tracks. This all tracks HBO. I'm sure we're seeing it with Amazon, we're seeing it with Disney, hundred percent. I am not surprised by this in any way, shape, or form. I'm more surprised they actually got evidence of it and then they're actually putting it out there in an article and it's coming from Rolling Stone. That more surprises me than anything, but now we know why. Because they got their panties in a twist because um they went after one of their people. So this is this is one of the the few times that we have actually and it only came out because of a lawsuit that we've actually seen proof that studio executives are obsessed with Twitter. They're Looking obsessed better. With Okay. A September report from Vulture suggested a PR firm had gained Rotten Tomatoes. We talked about that before. I think yes. System the Boost clients me rating successfully changing Rotten score to fresh. You know, I can't tell you how many times like, oh, it's review bombing. When people don't like something, it's review bombing. 
Um, but critics never get accused of review bombing, just the audiences. But with, but then all of a sudden you can review, you, you can inflate, artificially inflate reviews. And that's the same thing, but they're, that's okay. That's acceptable. And I've been telling you guys this whole time. I know other people have been telling you too. They're doing it the other way too. They're claiming everybody's review bombing, but they're counteracting it with concerted efforts to artificially inflate reviews. You see all these reviews that are being dropped that are like, you saw the movie yourself. There's like, there's no way it was that glowing of a movie. Five out of five. And it's all the same comments over and over again. New accounts. Yep. Accounts have never reviewed anything before. I mean, for all the review bombing, I would argue that artificial inflation probably happens more often. Oh, some yeah. people are just being honest in their review bomb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some people are, but it's either like glowing or like the worst. But yeah, they just said it, the fake accounts and petty tweets are just a small part of a wider lawsuit uh, that this guy's bringing against HBO. But I, I, I want to see the lid blown off of Disney because I guarantee you the rabbit hole goes very, very deep, probably at every division of, of Disney, especially. And uh, all these animation studios, too. And I, I still think some of the people that were the uh, the Shira, the Shiris were probably people that worked on DreamWorks Shira. They're still obsessed with uh, smacking down any dissent how many years after the show's been canceled, you know, because they haven't been able to find anything else or move on or whatever. But um, I think we're going to start seeing, I think we're going to start seeing a lot of this. Um, well, I just don't think people should trust this shit. I mean, we've no. been telling you that for a while, and then they always come out with, and then the people, well, the, the review bombing, it's funny too, the, all the outlets, right? Or, oh, the review bombing, the review bombing. How much do you want to bet that part of those people were involved in groups or friends with people that were doing the review bombing, you know, review or the review yeah. lifting, artificial inflation and reviews mm -hmm. at the same time, and they're being sent out to cover review bombing stories. Yeah, so they basically pushed this guy into being a, a sock puppet account master to say the shit that this guy can't couldn't say himself and so and i guarantee you there's so many more he so looks many like more the type i'm sorry he yeah, just he, does he does um god god he looks like uh he looks like that one cnn anchor that brian what's his face i don't know but he just looks like he um, just looks if you look at me like yeah he looks like the type he looks like the type all anyway, right anyway we're gonna wrap this up i think we need to wrap this up we're gonna keep an eye on this though because i think i think more more is gonna come out now as people lose their jobs and get pissed off and decide to spill the tea uh please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye